Welcome back to the Algarve. My most successful video in terms of viewing figures is this. Seven motorbike accessories you never knew you needed. I made it back in November 2019 and it's currently on 400,000 views, which by my standards is pretty good. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link in the description. But in the meantime, here's part two. Seven more motorbike accessories you never knew you needed. As with the original, everything you see I've paid for out of my own pocket, and I'm not being sponsored to promote anything, I'm just passing on a few tips. Links to all the items in the description. So let's kick off with the cheapest, simplest one first. Coloured valve caps. Now that most bikes come with black wheels, it's become difficult to see at a glance where the valve is located, and as you're meant to check tyre pressure before every ride, it's nice not to have to waste time trying to find the valve. I went with yellow, but there are a handful of colours available. OK, maybe not the classiest accessory ever, and I admit that as useful as I find them on my scooter on my van, I've yet to put them on the Speed Twin. Number two, a roll of protective clear film. I think every garage should have one of these, as they can be put to literally hundreds of uses. When I buy a bike that's new to the market, there are usually very few accessories available for the first few months. So rather than wait for my bike to pick up scratches and scuff marks, I cut out my own templates and stick them on the bodywork to protect it. On scooters this tends to be the centre tunnel, and on motorbikes it's the part of the tank that you lean against with the buttons and the zips from your jeans or riding jacket. Although I've also made a temporary screen protector for the scooter while I wait for Speedo Angels to produce a better one. I personally find a piece of film more aesthetic than some of the more ornate, imaginative aftermarket tank pads. And of course, you can make it to exactly the shape and size you require. I found the film is really best suited to gloss paint though. You can find matte film, but it's more visible once on the bike. There are many brands available online. 3M Scotchgard is probably the best known and certainly the toughest I've come across. But compared to some cheaper options, its thickness can make it quite difficult to install, especially on awkward shapes like motorcycle fuel tanks. Number three, a C-Tech battery tender. Not the most exciting accessory ever, is it? But maybe one of the most important. It's always a good idea to keep your bike plugged into one of these when you're not using it for more than a couple of days. And I've been using these C-Tech chargers for years and I've got three, two MXS5s and one XS0.8. This refers to the power output and therefore the speed of charging. The smaller one is really designed for bikes while the more powerful variant can handle the larger batteries you get in cars and vans. I do prefer the large model, however, because it charges faster, of course, but also offers a reconditioning feature that the smaller model doesn't have. Now, I'll come clean and say that I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between a battery charger, a battery tender, and a battery conditioner, but it's supposed to revitalize the battery to make it as good as new, and sometimes I use conditioner on my hair without really understanding what it's doing. It might just be marketing hype, but they advise doing this a couple of times a year, so I do. Number four, a screen deflector. I resisted buying one of these for years because they're not particularly good looking and depending on your screen can end up being right in your eye line, which is off-putting. But the screen on my new Honda ADV 350 scooter is so small that it really wasn't offering much in terms of wind protection. So I gave this deflector from GV a go, and it is very effective. I found the second highest screen setting offers the best protection for my 6 foot 1 or 187 centimeter body, but you need to experiment with the angle of the deflector and the height setting on your screen for the best results. I went with a version that clamps onto the screen rather than the model that requires drilling through it, so that I can remove it during the long hot summers we get here in the Algarve, but fitting is a simple two minute job. Number five, a quad lock phone holder. Now I've done a comparison video with other brands, link in the description, and this is my current favorite because it's relatively discreet on the bike and holds the phone very firmly. You can also get a host of different brackets and mounts to suit your particular bike. As you can see here, the scooter can take a basic mount. I always take the optional vibration damper, 
whereas the top clamp on my Triumph Speed Twin means I had to get the extension arm so as to be able to fit the mount to the left and still have the phone in the centre. The only downside is that your phone requires a specific case which has a hump on the back. Having always had a perfectly flat case on my phone I was expecting to find this annoying but in fact I very quickly got used to it and it really doesn't bother me now. I wish Quadlet would do a few alternative colours though. The cases are available in black only. Number six, an urban disc lock. Now I realise most of you will already have a disc lock. They're not necessarily the best way of securing your bike, but they probably are one of the easiest anti-theft devices to carry around. And I thought I'd just give a heads up to this urban model because it's one of the rare disc locks that allows you to choose whether you also want to alarm it. Press the plunger for a standard basic lock and then press this button if you also want the alarm. Another good feature is the way it warns you that the alarm is about to go off. If you accidentally nudge the bike, then it beeps once as a warning. Keep messing with the bike and the warning beeps intensify, giving you a few seconds to insert your key and disarm it. Only when it's gone through all these warning stages, which also means you can get away with not using a reminder cable, will it set off the alarm. Get the UR10 10mm pin model if your disc will take it, otherwise the smaller UR6 with its 6mm pin fits all scooters and smaller bikes. And last but not least, small bags, and by small I mean really small. Most luggage manufacturers are always keen to vaunt the carrying capacity of their range, and it's very easy to find huge 70 litre bags online. Thing is though, I don't cross the Sahara that often and I only need space to carry the essential for a ride of a few hours. You know, face masks, sunglasses, wallet, USB charging cable, multi-tool. And it's surprisingly hard to find really small bags. This zip-up bag from Decathlon, originally intended for bicycles, is discreet enough to be permanently attached to my Speed Twin. And when I go on a day trip, I'll use this tail pack from a small firm in the UK called Auto Kicker. It only holds two litres, but I find that's enough. You used to be able to find their stuff on Amazon, but since Brexit they seem to be offering it only via their website, and unfortunately only offer shipping within the UK. Let me know in the comments if you found any similarly small bags from any other source. Before I wind up, I'll slip this bonus in as I've just fitted this backrest to the ADV. Now I know it won't work for everyone of course, because while not quite as bad as a top case, it does leave your bike aesthetically challenged, but this backrest from Spanish manufacturer Shad has completely transformed the riding experience for my wife on our ADV, and she's much happier going on longer trips. It also gives me a bit more room as she's no longer clinging onto me for dear life. Uh, it's not really worth a separate video, so I thought I'd throw it in here. I was a bit hesitant to try it as I wasn't convinced it would make all that much difference, but it really does make riding as a pillion a more pleasurable experience. The metal bracket is extremely sturdy, doesn't flex at all, and the padded rest provides both comfort and a feeling of security. It also sends out the message that I love my wife more than I love my scooter, which has earned me lots of brownie points, although to be fair, I wouldn't fit one on my speed twin. I don't love her that much. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. Links to all the products mentioned in the description. Let me know in the comments if you found any similarly priced must-have accessories. And as always, thanks for watching.